You've heard of Conway's Game of Life. This is Conyers Game of Life. That's right, I made a Game of Life data pack in Minecraft. For those of you not familiar with the Game of Life, it's a mathematical quote-unquote game for no players invented by a mathematician called John Conway, dang it. It's a mathematical quote-unquote game meant to be run by a computer in which multiple cells are proclaimed either alive or dead. Each frame, or tick, the cells will determine whether or not they should stay alive, die, stay dead, or come alive. A living cell with two or three living neighbors will stay alive, and otherwise it will die. Meanwhile, a dead cell will only come alive if it has exactly three living neighbors. As you can see, this round of it has kind of gotten out of control. There's a whole bunch of these little gliders just kind of going off to infinity. I can simply run the function life clear to stop the simulation. As you can see, in my hand I have two pointers, one called cell placer and the other called cell deleter. These do exactly what they say, you can point at anywhere on the ground to place or delete a cell. This can be very helpful if you're trying to set up an initial condition to run the game, but it can also be quite fun to drop cells in the middle of a game and just see what happens. Once I've placed down a bunch of cells that I think I'm happy to start with, I can run the function game loop to go ahead and start the simulation. This particular configuration is actually a somewhat well-known pattern among people who play the game of life regularly. It's called the pentadecathlon because it has 15 different states that it oscillates between. If I ever want to stop the simulation without destroying the cells, I can run the function pause to freeze it in its tracks. I can also run the function tick to advance the game forward by one frame. If I want to change the rate at which the frames advance, I can also change the value of the tick delay using this command. This leads to a much slower speed and progression of the frames. Now the way this data pack is set up, this could theoretically go infinitely far, or at the very least out to the world border. Now I don't know if you can tell, but these cells are actually not solid blocks. To run this game, I'm actually using block display entities that have zero height and are positioned just slightly above the ground. Makes it a lot easier to do things like counting neighbors and calculating whether a cell should live or die, you know, that kind of stuff. If you want to get the data pack for yourself, I've provided a download link in the video description. One other thing I should mention is that if you want to use this data pack in another super flat world, you can use this command to change the height at which this game occurs. I've just set the height up to 3, and I can actually now fly around these pixels and even see them from underneath. Okay, now with that all out of the way, I kind of want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the Game of Life itself, because some of this stuff is really cool. The Game of Life has shown to be what's called Turing Complete, which essentially means that given enough computing power and time, you could simulate literally anything just using these little cells. I've even seen people create another copy of the Game of Life in the Game of Life, because apparently it's possible to build things like AND and OR gates. I'm not that technically advanced with this game, but I can create things like what we're seeing here. This is what's known as an oscillator. It has multiple states, in this case two, that it just keeps switching back and forth between. This is a glider, and as far as I'm aware, it is the smallest known self-propagating pattern in the Game of Life. Given enough time, this thing will just keep on marching down that diagonal all the way to infinity. What's really fun to do is to place things in its- oh, I just killed it. Great. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Here, I'm rebuilding the glider again without the game going. One really fun thing to do, in my opinion, is build things like gliders and allow them to collide with each other and see what they create. Okay, in that case they just killed each other. I know there are more interesting ways to do this, just give me a minute. Okay, so these are two patterns called spaceships along with a glider. I kind of want to see what happens if I let them traverse into each other. Oh, and the two spaceships killed each other. Okay, goodbye glider. Apparently I'm bad at this, I'm sorry. Let me try placing a cell right here. Oh, and that became stable. Right, so there's another thing I should mention. There are some configurations in this game that are completely stable. For this to be the case, all of the living cells have exactly enough neighbors to stay alive, and none of the dead cells have enough neighbors to come to life. However, some of these are more stable than others, and if I drop a single cell in here, it will start propagating. And look at that, it formed yet another stable configuration, too, this time, in fact. There are also some starting configurations that have been shown mathematically to grow infinitely in size. If I go ahead and start this one, it might not look like much at first, but apparently, according to Wikipedia, it has actually been proven that this one will grow forever. 
It just might take a while to do that, and it looks kind of cool while it's on its way there. Okay, I'm sorry if this video was a lot of just me rambling, but as many of you may have figured out, I am a complete math nerd. I've actually been wanting to make something like the Game of Life in Minecraft for a very long time, and only recently got the capability to do that once these block display entities came out. So I'm very grateful to Mojang for adding that. Oh, look at that, we've got some gliders escaping in the distance, hold up. Maybe I should stop this before it starts crashing my computer. Although, on that note, I should mention that this game isn't quite as computationally heavy as it might seem. If I go ahead and turn hitboxes on, you'll see these blue lines which signify the location of the text display entities. Or block display, whatever. Hey look, I have a hitbox. You'll actually see that this is not leaving any behind, and that's because I have it programmed where dead cells with too few neighbors will actually die. Living cells, meanwhile, can generate new dead ones. Anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said before, a download for the data pack is in the video description if you'd like to try this for yourself. I thought it was a lot of fun to make, so I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I hope that at least some of you enjoy playing around with it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in a later video. Goodbye.